Hi, Dr. Burgess here, and I hope you're all well. So this is part three of my getting prepared for sixth form. Now, um, you might think this is quite a strange subject to cover related to uh, knowing about revision, but I think it's really important that we look at revision because in your A-levels, um, there it will be slightly different to GCSEs in terms of the quantity of work you'll be expected to get through and therefore trying to remember that work for internal tests and assessments as well as external exams. What you might find surprising was that at school I was never taught how to revise and I think many students still to this day really don't fully understand what they should revise or how or when um, so this video is really to go through um, the main bits about what every student needs to know about revision. I'm going to talk about where is best, what techniques, when to start, what to revise and how often. So those are going to be summarised as when, how and where. So when we're going to be looking at things called spaced practice and interleaving, how is elaboration using concrete examples, retrieval practice and something called dual coding and where calm, neutral and clutter free, which we spoke about in my previous video on organizing yourself. So let's look at part one. When is the best time? to revise. OK, so I'm not going to go through how you would plan a revision timetable. So I'm going to give examples, um, two techniques which can be used separately um, or together for maximum effect to plan effective revision. The first one is spaced practice. So here I have the example of doing six hours of revision over a two week period. So you can see Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Well, that is going to be better than six hours all at once. Also, um, you when you're reviewing your work, it's really good to uh, let's say you do a maths lesson on a Tuesday period three. I would then give yourself a bit of a break. OK, maybe do something else. And then on the following day, you could then review the maths from Tuesday. And it's really important in your A-level studies to review your work regularly. That's the difference between GCSE and A-level in terms of we give you study periods during the day. So you can use those study periods, obviously, to do assignments, but also to review your work. So effectively, you never have nothing to do. And that's really important to state that you're, in A-levels, there is always something you can be doing. Obviously, you need to take a break at times. It's not about working all of the time, but it's working uh, kind of, I would say, working in a smart, intelligent way. So obviously, you could review the maths that you did the day before. But then obviously, over time, you're going to be needing to factor in time to look at maths you may have looked at one week ago or even maths from one month ago. So it's really important to review. The more you review, the more likely you are to remember things for tests and assessments. It also helps you understand the course because as the A-level course progresses, the links are made between units of work. So a question you might have is, why does space practice work? Well, very simply, um, you might struggle to remember things, and that's quite common, OK? But don't worry about that. Um, space, fa uh, space practice forces you to review your work on a regular basis, and therefore you're more likely to commit it to memory. So discussing when is the best time to revise, the second method I'm going to talk about is called interleaving. So when you do uh, some form of revision session, it doesn't need to be maths, it can be whatever subject you're on. Uh, it's important to try and look at different topics. So go over topics in different orders and that strengthens your understanding. 
So your first maths revision session may be geometry and algebra and graphs. Your second revision session, you would then start with algebra and then graphs and geometry. And your third time, graphs, geometry, algebra. So you can see that you've changed that order and therefore it helps to firm up your understanding of a topic. It also not only firms up your understanding, it means that you make bet better links between different topics as well. Okay, so why does interleaving work? Well, with spaced practice revision and changing the order within which you learn single topics will actually firm up your understanding and firm up the memory um, and re recall of these um, topics and it will help you with your learning in the long term as well. Okay so part two how should you revise? Well that's a very personal question um, and I know that um, you as an individual may already have a way that you revise uh, which is great and so um, I'm going to talk about effective techniques in terms of how you should revise um and using a range of techniques to suit you will mean that you're more likely to remember things a really good method is called retrieval practice so retrieval practice uh, there are several things you can do first of all you can put away all the resources so make sure you put away your exercise books and textbooks and then you try and write or you sketch or you check uh, your understanding and then you check for your accuracy against the resources when you look back at them and you check that uh, you understand what you have written or sketched. Second way is um, obviously with a test, take lots of practice tests. You could create them yourself. So you could maybe get together uh, questions and also a really good way is to swap with friends. So try and find a study buddy, someone who you uh, friends with or even just someone who's in your class and actually you can then test each other both on your knowledge and your application of your knowledge. Many students like to create flashcards so uh, many take the postcards so A5 or even smaller postcards and create flashcards so that will have a question and an answer uh, sometimes the answer is on the back and then obviously you can then make links between ideas and topics on the cards and you can test each other. So retrieval practice works for several reasons. Firstly, you are checking and rechecking your understanding, um, but also you're going to recall ideas and links as well through the words and definitions. So it's not just about definitions and words, it's about the ideas as well. Now, obviously, some of you will like to talk about your work, and that's completely fine. Again, in the sixth form, you can use the breakout rooms for talking about your work, or you can use downstairs in the cafe. So elaboration, all that means is you're thinking about, well, how and why. So you're finding the answers to your revision, and you're discussing this with your study buddies or revision buddies. This definitely deepens your understanding and your learning. So you can start to then make connections between ideas and topics, and then you can explain similarities and differences in certain aspects. So you're evaluating your work, which is definitely a higher learning skill. So elaboration works because you're checking your understanding and you're checking your accuracy of your of your explanations against what we would say the original material. Now, in some of your subjects, you'll need to be able to link those ideas and evaluations related to concrete examples. So you're going to find examples that link the ideas and the topics to something that is real and you collect those examples together. Now, um, those might be ideas and topics from your class notes, your teacher, your exercise books, and you collect them all together. So why do concrete examples work? Well, first of all, they're relevant to you. So they're going to be specific and rememberable. And then you can check via your understanding of the facts related to concrete example. The next strategy I'm going to talk about is dual coding. Now, dual coding is a great way 
uh, to use visuals to remember or revise your work. So the central idea is this, uh, that you take your words, so you're taking words and notes, um, and you are converting them into visuals. Um, for example, this presentation, I am using dual coding visuals to try and explain things to you in a simple fashion. So um, you'll notice that there's very few words, there's me talking about it, obviously, but there's very few words on my presentation. And dual coding can really make a difference in terms of uh, doing all of the strategies we've spoken about at the moment related to retrieval practice, concrete examples, and also elaboration. So why does dual coding work? Well, basically what you're doing is you're taking all of your notes and information and you're placing them into different styles of um, visuals. So for example, you could use an infographic, you could use a diagram. So some of you might know uh, branch diagrams like mind maps. Um, you can use cartoon strips, graphic organizers, so making links between different subunits, and also timelines. So a timeline might be useful if you need to learn lots of dates or sequential information that occurs over a specific set time. If you want some um, ideas and some examples, uh, then please do find me at the start of term and I'm, I'll be very happy to share with you um, some examples. So what's the overall recipe for effective revision? Well, this uh, recent study has shown um, that different kind of aspects are really important that you need to try and bring together. So for example, uh, we've been talking about retrieval practice, spaced practice and interleaving. And then on the other side of the uh, equation is your motivation. So hopefully, because you've chosen the subjects that you want to want to learn about, you're motivated to learn. Um, support, so what kind of support do you have from your friends, from your family, from your teachers, from me as your head of year? Um, and also attendance, and attendance is really, really important because without attendance, then you can't understand the information that you've been given sufficiently in depth, really. If you are missing certain things, so let's have a look. So the second column, you can see if you are missing attendance, then that will result in lower results. Uh, if you're missing support, that may lead to anxiety and struggles with your your um, with your studies, and that's where, um, as a sixth form, we'd be really there to help you if you're if you're missing that support. Uh, motivation. Now, I'm not saying you will be mo motivated all of the time. I think that's impossible for a human being to be motivated all of the time. But it's about being aware of your motivation and why are you in sixth form? What is the ultimate goal? And trying to keep that internal motivation going. Otherwise, it will lead to underperformance. Um, without space practice and interleaving, that would result in poor retrieval uh, in terms of cramming your work all into one. And then if you're missing retrieval, then that is an ineffective strategy because um, you're not going through your work and double checking, reviewing and getting it uh, to stick in, into your brain. Okay, on to part three. So how can I help myself, it should really say. So this is more about what you can do. And I think it's really important you find a calm place that you can do your work. So, for example, um, no mobiles, so uh, turning off any alerts that you might have. Uh, you need to plan your revision timetable. Um, I can do it. I probably will do a future video on how you plan revision timetables, trying to stick to a plan as well. Uh, make sure you have a calm and peaceful, not a clam and peaceful, but a calm and peaceful place to revise. Um, very, you know, very kind of basic information here, but make sure you eat well, make sure you have regular meals, don't skip meals, trying to think, try and think about uh, having a balanced meal and nutrients, proper nutrients that will um, give you the energy to do your work. Make sure you get the right amount of sleep. That goes without saying. I know some people find it hard to sleep, but for example, don't look at a screen 10 minutes, 20 minutes before you go to bed, make sure everything's turned off. Um, and make sure that you can uh, 
um, find a calm place to sleep. Uh, make sure you exercise. Now, that's something that I think is really important for your mental health. Um, I like to run, so um, uh, I'm not a big runner, but I do some running to uh, help me with not only my physical, but my mental health as well. And also, I know we've been talking a lot about revision and all the things you should be doing, but I think re it's really important to state that you do need to build in some time for you to relax. I think that's really important to state. So doing your A-levels is not uh, a sprint. It is a marathon. You have to pace yourself. And it's important that you find time to do the hobbies and interests that you have in your own time. I hope you found that really useful. Um, I am going to thank Richard Clutterbuck, who is an education consultant who has come up with these ideas and actually done quite a bit of research into what is effective for revision strategies. Uh, if you want to find uh, more, then you can go to www.rclutterbuck.com. Thanks for listening and I will see you soon.